SGC here, and today's movie review is Jack the Giant Killer slash Slayer. Weird change of name, actually. Killer sounds way more badass than Slayer. But it's probably attuned to why the film is made for children sort of thing. So I'm going to do this review in the context that I heard people slept in this film as in falling asleep, wholly made this for children, and it was not good. Why did I watch this film despite all that? Fantasy films are sort of my sort of like, whoo, I gotta check it out, because I just like a different world. Contemporary stuff is good as it gets, action films, whatever, what have you actually. Fantasy is sort of like the imagination at its best, to me anyway. Like, sure, your dialogue can suck, storyline can suck, but the world of itself can just be intriguing enough to save the film for me. So Jack the Giant Slayer, the general plot line is just a revamp of the whole Jack and the Beanstalk thing. It deals with the history of how giants came to Earth sort of thing, and then they chop the beanstalk down, and then they have this crown thing that controls all these giants, and things happen. And the beanstalk obviously goes up, and giants come down and kill people. It's all in the trailers, folks. We have Nicholas Holt as the main character, and it's pretty interesting that they're putting this film out right after Warm Bodies. More to say about that afterwards. And then we got Eleanor Tomlinson, who's actually an English actress, and she was in Alice in Wonderland, but I don't know how much because I never watched that film. For sure, she is stunning. In some shots, she's just like, wow, you are such a beaut tea sort of thing and pretty much I watched it for her and sort of Nicholas Holt like did this film would it have helped you as much as Warm Bodies and I must say with Nicholas Holt I'm glad that Warm Bodies came out first so we also got Stanley Tucci who plays this like evil dude and evil dude pretty much and then we got Ewan McGregor who's sort of like let me help you and I can do all things sort of hero personnel sort of thing. So that's all the actors and actresses and okay what did I like about this film? The general vibe of this film is fine like it's Jack and the Giant Beanstalk they're in like a kingdom kings and knights sort of world and it works. We got over the top like armor plating and like sort of thing and then you got this weird Nicholas Holt wearing a hoodie slash cloak thing that was just kind of weird. Nicholas Holt here is, I would say his acting, he has a lot more lines because he actually talks in this film, unlike Warm Bodies, and I'm saying he's cool. Like, he is a stand-up guy, you would root for him sort of thing. He is your typical hero. I mean, like, pretty much, if he plays another fantasy film, he's gonna be the hero. So if he's a villain in a movie, I would totally check that out for sure. Ewan McGregor is Pretty cool. I mean, I missed him for some reason. I have no idea why, but it's just nice to see him on the screen again because he's cool and he's got his accent going on. And then you got the giants. The giants are pretty menacing. I mean, I don't know. Like, sure, the CGI ain't that super, but the threat sort of is there. It's really like, oh man, humans have no chance whatsoever. So, what is there not? Okay, so that, really, I didn't really say that much about this film that I liked because it's not that, I don't, not good I guess. So what did I not like? First off, when you start off a movie with that sort of intro and that CGI, you just lost my interest. So even without starting the film, you lost my interest. Your main actor and actresses didn't even show up on the screen and you lost my interest. Bad move. I would have liked for just maybe artwork to have portrayed the history historical value of the beans and the crown that would have been totally fine but no you gotta do this like crap ass cgi and i'm just not even cgi it's cg cinematics that's just what who who greenlighted this eleanor tomlinson eye candy amazing i would go just oh my goodness she's so pretty at times but that's pretty much it her lines are not i don't know like I don't know, standard. And then the whole love thing between her and Nicholas Holt totally did not exist. Like, it was not convincing whatsoever. If you watch my Beautiful Creatures review, I brought that up. Also, this is actually worse than Beautiful Creatures because it's just like, you rescued me. Let me kiss you. But I guess that sort of fits the vibe of the whole fantasy, like, oh, hero gets the maiden in need, in peril, or whatever. As awesome as Stanley Tucci is as a villain, I think Ian McShane as a 
grumpy old father king if they switched their roles man this movie would totally be different because i mean we have a grumpy tired king by ian mcshane and it's not that interesting to watch because he's just like i lost my wife and i'm being overprotective of my daughter and he's like really boring to watch pretty much and from what i've been hearing ian mcshane is a good villain he's usually in a villain and i don't really actually remember what villain he's been in recently and Stanley Tucci is sort of light-hearted, but evil. So I sort of wish the king was actually Stanley Tucci. I would have liked his light-heartedness and maybe just strength for, like, I believe in my people. Yeah, Stanley Tucci could have pulled that off. And Ian McShane could have just went nuts and go like, oh, I am gonna rule this kingdom. Let me do this with giants. He could have done that, and I would have been totally fine. But they... Stanley Tucci, as a villain, it's, it's like you're there, but not really there for me. Yeah. Jack the Giant Slayer Killer. 3D, well, you know how I feel about 3D. I don't really care for it. And sure, there are some scenes where they used it well, but I would rather skip it when I'm in. CGI for the Giants, uh, hit and miss. Could have been, I don't know. I mean, like, you have so many Giants. Couldn't there have been more lines from them or more interaction? The fact that they take forever just to have the beanstalk grown and then take forever to get to the giants and then they escape. It was just like, whoa. And then they have a fight and the movie's over. You're like, what? Could have been more epic. Giants, I don't know, like tied them down, slash at their heels or something because they're puny and tiny or something. Like, I wanted more giants versus humans rather than giant versus castle wall but there is a huge but here what saves this movie for me is it's a fantasy film like the pacing is different to your standard action film sure things took forever to build up but as a fantasy film i sort of expected that for some reason and i like the movie more than i thought i would that's probably because i have no expectations but that eleanor tomlinson was pretty on screen and that was satisfied, and Ewan McGregor was awesome, and like, being Ewan McGregor sort of way. And yeah, like, if you consider this as a normal fantasy film, fantasy films take forever to pace, because they take forever. So, as I said in the beginning, I, would, I was going to address the whole warm body slash giant slayer thing. Warm Bodies obviously was a better portrayal of Nicholas Holt's acting and a better movie in general because it has that like catch of like zombies becoming back to life where you have giant slayer fantasy film nothing that new and using an old fantasy story classic ish thing and strangely enough Giant Slayer was actually filmed before Warm Brody, so probably production companies are like, we got two to choose from, what are we gonna do? Of course they're gonna choose Warm Bodies. It's like Avengers and Hansel and Gretel. Like, why did Hansel and Gretel come out all of a sudden right after Avengers, right? Like, obviously they're trying to catch the awesomeness of Jeremy Renner with Hansel and Gretel. Have yet to see that, though. And also the same thing for Snow White and the Huntsman, catching the hype for Chris Hemsworth with Thor and Avengers, awesome stuff. And strangely enough, these fantasy films aren't doing that great. Because, I mean, you got your Jack and the Giant Beanstalk, Snow White, and Hansel and Gretel. And, like, there has to be a pattern. Like, people, like, I don't know, put more effort into these films just because, like, don't put it as canon flotter as in, like, oh, that film... Avengers did well, so Thor's in it, and Thor's in this movie, so this other movie must do super well. Surprisingly, Cabin in the Woods with Chris Hemsworth was really awesome, but that was filmed like in 2009, so, and he wasn't really that key in that movie, so maybe, I don't know, yeah. So, that's how I felt about Jack and the Giant Slayer, as I had no expectations and fantasy. You judge fantasy films differently sometimes, or I do anyway. Anyway, so that is all for Jack the Giant Slayer slash Killer review. So that's all. See ya.